Hey guys, Terry Food here. So we saw already a comparison with the 5K and the Odyssey Plus in our True the Lenses series. And well, in this video, I want to talk about the screen on the 8K, the highest resolution VR headset on the market right now with a whopping resolution of 3840 by 2160 each eye. Impressive. So let's talk about the visual of this thing. What are the difference a little between the 5K and the 8K? And let's explain what to expect overall from this top tier headset. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so first of all, we have to talk about the specs on the screen. Of course, this is an LCD display, 3840 by 2160 per eye with a number of pixels that is around 16 million, over 16 million pixels, that is impressive. It's the most pixels we have in a VR headset. Another thing that we have to say is this screen will work at 80 Hz and not 90 Hz like all the other VR headsets on the market. Is that gonna be a problem? Well, not really. Uh, we saw also now that uh, Oculus is pushing out the Rift S with 80 Hz. I didn't have problem with those. I was a little scared, but I was already trying this one and I never had a lot of problems. Of course, the 90 Hz will be always better, but 80 Hz still works and maybe you need a little more to make your VR legs ready, but well, it's something that you can bear with in case. So don't worry, it's not a deal breaker after all. Also, another thing that I wanna point out anyway, is called the 8K, but it doesn't really have an 8K resolution. 4K plus 4K doesn't make 8K, but makes like a 6K, stuff like that, because an 8K display will be for 4K display. And here we have just two. Anyway, a marketing move, still the highest resolution on the market. Now, why anyway, seeing the comparison that we saw with the 5K, the clarity on the 5K looks actually better than the clarity on the 8K. Well, there are two main reasons. One, because here we have a pen tile display. That means that we have two sub-pixel every pixel and not three, like the RGB pixel arrangement. We saw that and we talked about that in different video, but the very brief thing is that in any pixel in the RGB pixel arrangement, you have a green, a blue and a red. Instead, here you have a green every time and one pixel is gonna have the red, one pixel is gonna have the blue. So there are two sub-pixels every pixel. Also, the pixels are not arranged in a rig, like the RGB pixel arrangement, but they're usually in diagonal. So that means that we, when you try to read something, uh, well, the, the edges are not gonna be perfect line, but a little jab, because you have to turn on all the pixel and you have, of course, been in diagonal, the parts in between the pixel that are gonna show up. So nothing is gonna be as clear as the RGB pixel arrangement anyway, but still the resolution is very high, so you're not gonna have problem reading with this one. Another thing that we have to point out is that AK doesn't receive through the cable a full resolution. So you don't receive two 8K, two 4K uh, inputs for the displays, but what you're gonna receive is the same resolution that you receive with the 5K, so a 1440 resolution to the HMD. And then the headset itself is gonna upscale to 2160. So you don't have a native resolution here. And many times we saw already in different headsets and something that we're gonna see also in the Oculus Quest, for example. Many games, sometimes you have to bring down the resolution to make it run faster and better. And yes, you don't have the same clarity because you don't use in the same way every pixel that you have in your panel. And well, there is the problem that you have with this. To have a really crisp resolution, you have to cramp up the super sampling. But the problem is that because you're playing with very high resolutions that are over 4K each display, well, it's very hard on the GPU and the 2080 Ti many times is not even enough to like use it. So it's something that you have to consider. You really need to have a super beefy computer to run this thing. But it's something that we're gonna talk about in the full review a little better. Now let's get back to the screen. And what we have to say is that the brightness anyway is not the best overall. It's a very dull display, also compared to the 5K, for example. If you compare it to an AMOLED display, well, there is a big difference over there. When I was recording, for example, 
in my True the Lenses video, I had to cramp up the ISO so how much the film is like sensible to the light, even if it's digital right now, but that come from uh, the analogic camera world, um, to sometime 1200, 800, when with the Odyssey Plus I was using 200 as ISO. So there's a big difference in terms of brightness. Does it create a problem while you're playing? Well, not really. Uh, at the end of the day, you get used to, but I prefer brighter display, to be honest, but this is still a good display overall. The colors also are a little better here than on a 5K, so uh, are not the best colors overall, but are not bad at all. The blacks is an LCD display, so you have to consider that those pixels are anyway lit. So it's a dark gray, very dark gray. I have to say that here anyway is darker than on the Pimax 5K, as you can see also in the True Lenses video. Talking about the lenses anyway, because that's a vital part of the headset, there are the same lenses as all the other Pimaxes. So the God rays are pretty much gone, but you have some glaring every time, but because the screen is not so bright, well, the glaring is a little less. And overall, what I noticed also, it could be a calibration of this unit, I, I have no idea, but the distortion is actually less than what I see on the 5K. And that's something that makes me use it more than the 5K at the end of the day, because uh, I can wear it for longer and use it for longer without the problem with that distortion that sometimes like, uh, makes your eyes feel a little funny, at least in my experience. Now talking directly about the screen door effect is actually less than the 5K as screen door effect. Well, I have to say that for me, I notice it less because there are many more pixels, but the clarity is also less. Everything look a little softer and uh, yeah, it really reminds me like uh, the Odyssey Plus compared to their uh, regular Odyssey where yes, you take rid of the screen door effect, but on the same time you get rid also of some clarity uh, in this case, not for the filter on top, but is in this case is because of the upscale of the resolution. Is it overall a bad display? No, I actually love it. If I have to say I prefer the 8K to the 5K Plus, not just for the distortion, but also the way things look, everything looks a little more natural, the color are a little better, that little bit that actually makes it more enjoyable and because the brightness is uh, lower, also the blacks are a little more black than on the 5K Plus. Also, now with the new software tool on Pi Tool, you can adjust the contrast and the brightness a little better, also on the left and right, so you can change for some reason the difference on the two screens. Uh, I don't know why you wanted to do it, but well, you have the option to do it, and so things can get even better, and you can adjust for every single game that can be a perk or not because you have to change every time, but you have to adjust for every single game to have better contrast if you have more like black areas or you can put less contrast and uh, more brightness in case of you have a very like bright game. Uh, everything is like in your hands and you can tweak that a lot. Overall, what I think about this display, I think this is a great display. Uh, I'm not sure if it's worth like $200 more, to be honest, but this is a choice that you can have. About the screen, I have to say I'm super positive. I actually prefer this, as I said, to the 5K Plus, but we're gonna talk about it more when I'm gonna do a comparison between the two and in the full review of the 8K. That's not gonna be a full full review because many of the things are gonna be covered, of course, by the 5K reviews because they're very, very similar, but we can talk a little better about it and what to expect in the overall experience. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was useful for you to decide and understand a little better what is this display, what to expect from this headset itself, and yeah, Anyway guys, as always, if you liked the video, like, if you didn't like the video, dislike, subscribe to the channel for more about VR and tech, and a lot of videos from the Pimax, and also the coming Oculus Rift S and the Quest, it's gonna be a very, very interesting period in VR, also the Valve Index is coming, so, oh my god, so many stuff to review, a uh, lot of interesting things are coming very, very soon, so stay tuned for it, and I see you guys in the next video, thanks for watching, ciao!